Right now we're reading Tin Star in Language Arts, and what we're at is page 149. And in this particular part of the book, we know that Luke has been able to get a little bit of refreshment. He uh, met that family, and they fed him, and he got a horse from them. He got some other stuff, but he's been riding along, and he suddenly finds himself encountering two new men. And that's where we're at in 149. They kind of surprised him by saying, come on, here we are. Who are you? And we have, hello, it's 149. He forced himself to sit still and not reach for a six-shooter. The ease with which the uh, one had drawn with the accuracy of his marksmanship warned Luke how close he was to dying. And he wasn't anywhere near as fast as Jack Rabbit. For one of them... The man on the right fixed the steely gaze on Luke. Are you are you one of them? And demanding an answer, I'm not sure what you mean, who you mean, but if you intend to throw down on me, if I answer wrong, let me set your mind at ease. I'm not one of them, whoever that is. He smiled disarmingly. The men exchanged looks, then laughed. Wouldn't matter none if you was a lawman. You ain't you out law you out hunting for the right ring tailed war varmint? Luke realized then that the men were bounty hunters. They were bounty hunters. They had bounty hunters or people that have, they're like independently working to capture certain outlaws. They go get them and they bring them in for the reward. So Luke realized then that the men were bounty hunters. They had no quarrel with a posse other than that the posse might grab their quarry and steal away a reward. In a sense, both they and Luke were on the same side of the law, though he had never heard of a bounty hunter who didn't steal away a reward from someone more deserving if the opportunity presented itself. I don't know what you, who you mean. One of the Rhodes gang escaped from the jail over in Crossroads. The marshal won't talk none about it, so it must have been real embarrassing for him. He spat, then asked outright, You a bounty hunter? The tin star weighed a hundred pounds in Luke's pocket. More, more. Showing it to the bounty hunters wasn't a smart move. He shook his head slowly. Can't say that I am. I'm out looking here for a woman named Sarah Youngblood. She's not got a reward on her. And he's turned the page. Looking for a woman? said the guy, one of the guys. The men laughed until tears came down their che ran down their cheeks. The one who had shown his prowess with his iron added, the three of us are looking for a woman, I'd say. Only we're not overly picky. Don't care what her name is. So far, we ain't had no such luck. Seems the pretty ones don't want to catch our cooties, and the ugly ones cost too much. She's wearing a tattered wedding dress. Luke watched it for their reactions. Neither of them tried to hide what went on between their ears. They were crude, and if he and if he was any judge, devastatingly, devastatingly efficient in her job. She ran off during our wedding. That's rich. If she did, I should wait. She ran off during her, your. She ran off during your wedding. That's rich. If she did, you are. Better off letting her go. Uh, any filly who'd change her mind at the last second isn't for fit for a man. The other chimed in, soiled doves are cheaper in the long run, and you can pick a different one every time you get the itch. Get the itch? That's what you get from a soiled dove? You may be like you did over in Denver. Remember the big redhead you gave you a laugh, clap? I was lucky you just got first dibs. The senorita I had has more than I could handle, almost. Luke held his tongue. The two argued endlessly over anything and everything. When they finally ran down and took turned back to him, he realized he had to get away from them. If you gents don't mind, I have to be on my way. That's your horse? The one pointed. Both laughed. Hey, don't laugh. It'll hurt his feelings. Luke patted the horse's neck. The huge animal leaned into him and almost knocked him over. 
You're definitely not a bounty hunter. No self-respecting vigilante rides a nag like that. Luke nodded and gave what he hoped was an agreeable, agreeable smile. Don't you go insulting our new friend, Zeke. Don't go using a tone with me, Deke. Luke blinked. They acted like brothers but looked nothing alike. From their names, they might have been mistaken for twins. He had grown up with twins named Benjamin and Kenneth. Ben and Ken always and never their full names. A touch of skepticism made him think that Zeke and Deke were summer names. Bounty hunters changed their names as they went from one part of the country to another because they was as likely to be wanted by the law as the men they caught and shot. It's about time for me to ride on, Luke said. He shifted his weight to draw if that if it came to that. Neither of the two bounty hunters looked the least bit concerned that he might start flinging lead in their direction. They had already dismissed him as a threat. The sad part was that Luke agreed. He might clear the leather, but the speed he had seen from both of them would leave him gasping for life. He understood a little better why so many men were killed by getting shot in the back. It was safer. Now, boy, you have to be worried about something sick riding around the countryside all by your lonesome. The one calling himself Zeke spoke. His partner nodded vigorously. Why is that? said Luke. Where after the escapee and the crossroads town marshal says he's a slippery cayuse. <laughs> They're after the escapee. They think that Luke was part of the gang. Yeah, right. Okay. Dangerous as a stepped on prairie rattler, too, added Zeke. Deke. The two might be looking to rob him, but all they would get would be his gun and boots. The few coins he had left in his pockets hardly enough to shot a whiskey. And neither of them would think to rip open the gold dust laden seams on his coat, as bad as it was. They had already passed judgment on the plow horse, and Luke had to agree. That horse wasn't worth leading to the glue factory. I appreciate your concern, fellas, but I haven't been seeing anyone out here. This escape conflict isn't going to be a bother. Posse we ran into, not all that far back, is looking for any solitary rider. The way Zeke dropped that out as if it was something about it looking like rain or the sun came up in the east every morning alerted Luke. These two had a good idea he was the man. Ben Wilkes was hunting. He had no idea if the marshal had posted a reward, but even a few hundred, a few dollars interested men like Deke and Zeke. So he is getting the hint from them that maybe he shouldn't go out by himself. And he's getting the hint that they might think he's the guy that they're looking for. So it's going to get kind of interesting. That was especially true since they didn't have to go far or risk much to, com to collect enough money to buy a bottle of whiskey. A long rider, eh? A lone rider, eh? Luke looked for Northwest. I came across a trail of a single rider headed that way. He pointed in the direction of Mar Marta Shearing, had taken. I'm not much of a tracker, and I hadn't heard about escaped prisoners. He hated the idea of putting those two on Marta's trail, but he began to think any subterfuge saved his life. Deacon Zeke had the look of men who took their quarry to, in dead. Less fuss, and they didn't have to feed a prisoner. Luke shuddered, thinking a bullet in the head might be preferable to drinking their vial of coffee. He doubted either of them rose above the level of poisoner when it came to fixing victuals. Do tell. The two, the two exchanged a quick glance. You think uh, you can find this trail? They tried to keep eager looks off their faces and failed. I don't see why not. It was a single rider leading a spare horse. This caught their attention. Two horses, one rider, two horses. He continued. 
All that meant to me was someone with more money than sense. Or if they can afford two horses to ride that, they're in a powerful hurry. Luke fell silent and left the men whisper back and forth. Zeke pointed once in his direction with the lure of two decent horses to steal rather than a sway back plow horse beside the argument. There, three of us riding all to get along together. It'll be more than any escapee would want to hit tangle with. That is, if you'll throw in with us. He wanted to find out more about where the bounty hunters had run into the posse. Three men riding along attracted no attention at all from the posse, not like it would if it were rode alone. He patted the horse's neck. Pardon. Outrunning a posse meant leaving the horse behind and trying to outdistance them on foot. For a day or two, that is, if we can split any reward. Luke had no interest in rewards, but he saw that the pair expected such a protest. They haggled a bit, then arguing that their tracking skills deserved more. A final split of 20% to Luke, and the rest split... Between them was shaken on, but Luke knew he had a he'd have a bullet in the back if that proved the easier road to take for the bounty hunters. He mounted and got his horse ambling along. Cutting farther north brought him to a lake. Even he found hoofprints in the muddy shoreline. Yep, two horses, he said, after examining the tracks. He watered the horses and rode on. Not more than a day ago. He stood and scratched himself, scratched himself. What's the matter? Luke saw something was eating Zeke. Something more than fleas that infested his clothing. The depth of the prince is all wrong. Unless we're chasing about the skinniest man alive or a boy. Neither horse shows a carrying much weight. Makes sense that the spare trots along our along our Fancy free with our rider, spoke up Deed, Deke. Might be the rider's a boy and not a full-grown man. Luke already knew the answer. The rider was a small woman. He resisted the temptation to toss out the tidbit, to play one upmanship with the bounty hunters. The dumber he played, the longer he stayed alive. They know the escaped prisoner was a man if they talked very long with Wilkes or any of his deputies. He let his horse drink from the lake, ready to pull away if it showed signs of talk and taking it too much. His heart felt as if someone grabbed it and squeezed hard when he saw a line of riders on the horizon. Zeke had already spotted them and saw his worry. That's the posse from town, Zeke said. They either found a trail or are riding in circles. They're not too far from where we crossed paths with them early this morning. Never nervous, Luke stepped up into the saddle and pulled his hat down to his ears. Then he slumped forward to give the impression of a shorter man riding with the other two. So you get Luke here is trying to play smart with these two guys because he's picked up the fact that they've already talked with the uh, marshal. And the posse, he they know about the posse, and they know he knows that they're looking for one guy. Well, guess what? He's one guy, and they know that they're looking for somebody who broke out from the jail. Well, he broke out from the jail, but he's not one of the gang. So he's trying to play very careful with these guys because he just he doesn't want to get killed, basically. So anyway, we might ride along a spell with them, Duke said. The way he studied Luke when he made his suggestions spoke worlds about the bunny hunters. Deke needle him. They had no more desire to ride with a posse than he did. You're within a day of catching up, and you said they're riding in circles. Why do you want to give up your share of any reward? Has there ever been a posse that split reward money? The ones with the most guns get the bounty. Luke tried getting his horse to a faster gait. It plodded along at the same rate it had since he had first set a straddle. 
How much is the reward anyway? $25. It's a 50. It's 50. But he's already split up between the pair of us. Split three ways, how we agreed. Uh, that would be 10 for me and 20 for each of you, Luke said, doing the ciphering and said, one of his strengths as a farmer had been figuring out costs and yields. He had been so good at doing sums that Mr. Dalton at the mercantile had offered him a job as a clerk. Wave to them, Zeke said. They're a friendly bunch. He followed his own advice. They're friendly because they each had a pint of whiskey given them before they hit the trail. When that rot guts gone, mark my words, they won't be as sociable, Deke said. Deke waved. Luke joined in keep, to keep from standing out as the only one not greeting the distant posse. He felt the tin. Pardon me. He felt the tension flow from him. When a couple of the deputies way back and the entire posse kept on riding. They weren't looking for three men together. They wanted a single rider. That made him wonder if Wilkes had given up on the finding Raleigh Rhodes and his gang. But Marshall hadn't been too eager to continue the hunt when he had nabbed him and tucked him away in the jail cell. One robber who didn't shoot it out was safer to hunt than a gang willing to blow up a bank because he got the leader enjoyed the carnage dynamite created. Looks like we're on the right track, Deke said, after walking back and forth along the lake shore. The rider went that way. Luke tried to see across the lake to where Maria to where Marta might have ridden. He had to believe she followed the gang's trail using her own skills while he depended on the bounty hunters to find her. Luke wished he had the chance to swap riding with her for being under the thumb of two bounty hunters. They, they mounted and started around the lake. The two rode ahead, eagerly pointing out signs on the ground that Luke barely saw or had no idea at all what excited the, his new partners. When he caught up, he asked, we got fresh prints, not more than six or eight hours old, but there's other tracks, a whole herd of horses from the way the ground's all chopped up. Zeke hesitated, then added, if I laid a bet on this, the rider we're following is after the herd of riders. That means a straggler from the gang that robbed the Crossroads Bank is trying to catch up with the rest of the partners. Duke rubbed his palms on his thighs and tapped his fingers nervously. If we bring in the whole gang, there's plenty of reward to go around. Both men might as well have spoken loud. Luke knew what they really thought. Kill the bank robbers. Keep the gold stolen from the Crossroads Bank. That amounted to a whole lot more money than a reward, even for notorious outlaws. While they may not gun down the crooks, take the stolen gold and try to collect a reward from the dead bodies. They'd come under suspicion if they claimed the gold had been lost or already hidden. Luke knew how good Deke and Zeke were with their six shooters, but were they good enough to take on the Rhodes gang and best them? He knew how treacherously evil Rhodes and Bandit and the rest were, and down the bounty hunters had a chance, unless it involved back shooting or cutting throats in the middle of the night. Worse, Zeke and Deke had to kill Sarah and Marta too if they intended to steal the loot. No witnesses. Wow. Getting crazy, isn't it? That included Luke Hadley. Audrey, that name slipped out of his mind raced. The name slipped out of his mind raced. How is that old, son? So you, you say something? I remarked how close to sundown it is. He sought to camp out for the night and get an early start. If we're within a few hours of finding a single rider, we can spot him by noon. From the way the exchange knowing looks, to, from the way the two exchange knowing looks, he anticipated what they'd say. He wasn't disappointed. You go on and pitch camp. You got to make better copy than Deke. We'll just scout a ways ahead 
to be sure this is a safe place to spend the night. Yeah, safe. Well, I'm going to stop it right here. We're on page 158. And as you can see, they're following Marta's trail. And Luke's not saying a word about who that she's a woman because they're, they're after a guy. They think they're at, they might, they think there might be on the trail of a guy who broke out of the crossroads jail. He Luke knows it's Marta, but that's not important right now because right now Marta's chasing the gang. And Luke is trying to make sure they don't know him. He's the one that broke out of the jail. And what he wants them to do is follow that trail with the hopes that he can get her to be the one that well they I don't know if he wants to catch up with her, he wants to catch up with the gang. So he's keeping mum right now so he doesn't find himself shot by them. So a little more tension, a little more questions, a little more what is next. We're on page 158 now. I guess we'll find out next time what happens next. I'll talk to you later.